Friday night. And that means it's time for the stars of Live PD to weigh in on policing in America. A cop finds about a dozen men armed to the teeth on the side of the road. At 2 o'clock in the morning, just another day on the job for the men and women who wear the shield. And then later, losing out on the gold because you grabbed for the green. Weed, of course. And you've heard of grabbing a tiger by the tail? How about grabbing a bobcat off your wife? It happened, and it is in our look at the lighter side of the news, all tonight on Banfield. Hi, everybody. It's Friday night. Thank goodness we made it through the week. Um, it also means it's a time for the visit from the law enforcement officials who know firsthand what it's like to be on the front line policing in America. Joining us tonight from Live PD, our Captain Rafael Gonzalez of the Richland County Sheriff's Department. Back with us, of course, is Sheriff Mark Lamb of Pinal County, Arizona. And also joining us, former lieutenant with the NYPD, Dr. Darren Porcher. Hello to all three of you. It's great to see you again. Lots on the agenda. Let's start right away in Massachusetts. 11 members of an armed militia arrested after nearly nine hours of a standoff with the police. They refused to relinquish weapons that were not registered. I want to show you some of Boston WCVB's coverage. Take a look. State police shut down about a two-mile section of I-95 in and around Wakefield while We're they negotiated here. with a group of armed safe. men and while the men streamed the standoff on social media. We are on the Interstate 95 near uh, exit 57.4. State police say one of their troopers had come across the men in the middle of the night, pulled over along the highway in two vehicles, and putting fuel in one of their tanks. The, the men were wearing tactical-style gear and carrying rifles and pistols and told the trooper they were headed from Rhode Island to Maine for what they called training. Training. Okay. Well, um, Mark Lamb, if I had a nickel for all the times that you guys out there on the beat ran into people who called themselves sovereign citizens, meaning the law don't apply to me, I don't know I'd be doing the show right now, although I love being with you. But tell me what it's like when you run into these people who just don't think American laws apply. Yeah, most of the sovereign citizens you run into don't look like this. They're not full kit. They're not carrying guns like this. Um, they don't want to follow the laws of the land. And this group, although they claimed, I think they were claiming they were not sovereign citizens, they were actually claiming they were a part of a group called the Rise of, of the Moors, which I challenge your listeners to look that up. You got to understand that a little bit better. But uh, yeah, this anytime you run, anytime you run into a, a group of people like this that are heavily armed, and it's just you or maybe one other guy, this is a scary situation for us in law enforcement, especially with the way people are, are viewing law enforcement and uh, the attacks we've seen on law enforcement, this definitely would make the hair on the back of your head stand up. Right. And, and the funny thing is that first they said they were part of this Moorish group, which, you know, it's a bogus claim that, you know, the country had some treaty with America and they get to do what they want here. It's just not true. But then they had all the kit, like you said, that's a little scarier. And they did then add that it was a sovereign uh, kind of citizen movement, which made it even more complex. So Rafael Gonzalez, um, I know I've seen you on TV dealing with people like this. Usually they're a bit more... Um, odd, unusual. Uh, they don't have license plates. Uh, maybe a little easier and not as scary. But this one had sort of all the elements of bizarro. Yeah, that's correct. A lot of the times, um, I almost compare it to a, a bomb waiting to go off. So this is where the de-escalation technique really goes into play um, as far as how you want to approach this. Um, you just don't know what they're amping for, what they're trying to do. So it can be a hair-raising moment. Kudos to that officer. That, that that realized what was going on at that given moment and kudos to the um, law enforcement agency that took 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 part in this and and really de-escalated everything without a without a shot even being fired that's that's really amazing yeah so darren porcher weigh in real quick on what these guys uh, will be facing because they didn't think they were doing anything wrong those weapons weren't registered and they were crossing state lines Is, are they in for a world of hurt Right. They probably going to experience a level of federal charges that are going to be levied against them when we take in consideration the transporting of weapons from one state to the next. But you have to look at it from the safety perspective of the officer that was there. This officer is encountering or engaging people that are far more armed than himself. And so I really commend him in relating a level of de-escalation, stepping back and bringing in additional assistance. Unfortunately, this ended without a shot being fired, as my counterpart mentioned. 
Okay, so there are a lot of opinions these days, you guys, about police training, and I want to introduce you to Officer Luke Pauly, a guy who said that his training, quote, just kicked in when he approached a car that was, like, fully engulfed in flames on the highway in Michigan. Take a look at this. If it would have been a minute later, I'm sure there would have been a little bit more fire in the car, would have been more exposed, but I, I left on skates. I was worried it was going to blow up. Um, I, was, I never knew that cars don't explode, so uh, it was popping. I don't know what kind of chemical. I think it was from the tires that were making it, the popping noise. Okay, look at that. Look at that video. It is nothing short of remarkable. That's a 23-year-old man that was dragged out of that car unconscious as it was burning. You can see it's flipped. And so um, the officer takes the, I mean, I don't even know how he got close to the flames like that, but did, heard the screams, and the man's unconscious, uh, but alive. Thank God for that. Two nurses happened to be in traffic happened and were there also to come to assist. Mark Lamb, I don't care how much training you get, your human body does not want to go near to a massive fire that is likely to explode. And how do they do it anyway? It's the good men and women that put on this badge. That's a tribute to the work that they're doing. Uh, look, I, I think all of us, the three of us on this and all those other law enforcement officers across this country have run into similar scenes. You're not even thinking about the flames. We're so focused on trying to save that life. That's what that means to us. And we're willing to risk our own lives and our bodies to be able to do that. You know, and this is, this is why I think it's important that we showcase more of the good work that these men and women do. Uh, that's why I launched the American Sheriff Network, because I wanted to be able to showcase the good and the positive of the law enforcement. This guy deserves an award for what he did. It was amazing. He saved a life that day. And uh, he's, he's right there with so many other men and women who put on this badge every day. And they deserve the kudos for the good work they do. So I, I think that's interesting. You know, um, Captain Gonzalez, these are the stories that used to make the news all the time. And, and maybe they are making local news stories in that community, but they used to make the national news all the time. And now the only stories it feels like you see on the national news are when the police do something wrong. How is that balance going to shift or is that balance going to shift going forward? I think it's important to shift. Uh, departments nowadays, we've got a challenge where we've got to start pushing our platform. Um, we've got to put the good that our agency's doing here at the Richland County Sheriff's Department. We have a phenomenal community policing program and always ahead of the game or always staying ahead of this uh, uh, of, of all the negativity, whether it's going to events, Sheriff Lott is always doing a good job as far as promoting the positive impacts that our department's doing within the uh, within the community. So kudos to this uh, young officer. You can see, just like uh, the sheriff said, um, this is why we put the uniform on. We want to come out, help people. We're here to help people. So um, it, it, it's it's brave action at its best, but this is why we put on the uniform day in and day out is to go help people out. Oh, every time I see this, I just think, look at that guy. He is alive because of Luke Pauly, that officer uh, who did that in the middle of that. I mean, and, and he was right. Uh, you know when something's on fire like that, that the natural next action is explosion. So any minute he could have... Um, he could have been in a, a lethal situation. So, all right, I want to switch gears and go to Jersey, uh, suburbs, in fact, uh, in New Jersey. I'm sure that we are all about to agree on the same thing, that the guy who's featured in the upcoming video is nothing short of despicable, and that is not even conjecture, that's not opinion, it's just human grossness. Um, it raises a lot of questions also about when police officers can arrest somebody simply for just being racist and yucky. Or is it his free speech, no matter how disgusting, uh, to, to do what he's about to do and you're about to see? Here's the foundation. Uh, a woman in that house where this guy in the green is facing, she called her neighbor over to, to help out. The neighbor is a black man. He came over and that guy in the green named Edward Cagney Matthews was screaming at both of them, the guy and the woman on the doorstep. So let's roll it. 
Just like I told the Mount Laurel police, get these monkeys here and you can't do No, no, no. I'm going to let you do your thing. Go talk to these Go ahead. Stop, stop. Go talk to them. Let them know what I'm all about and what the rights they have. All right. You want to go back to your house? I'll come back to you. No, I'll stand right here. It's common property. Not I'm not going away until your husband stops yeah. finding me and threatening me while I'm at work. Kanye, cut it out, man. Oh, wait. Talk to them. Arrest me. I'm not oh, you can't. Right now. Relax. You just cut it out, dude. I'll That's what you can see, Brandon. 3602. Come see me, you. Please come to see you, Cagney. Go home. I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, so much to unpack there. Uh, first of all, guys, I couldn't even run most of it, but I encourage everybody who's watching right now to go to the YouTubes that aren't censored so that you can really feel what it was like and the things that were being saying sa said. You effing N-word, you monkey. I mean, it was horrendous to see this happening. And then the police arrived, and two things could be seen by whoever was watching. And Darren Porcher, because you're a doctor in, in all of this, I want you to help me through this. You could either see that cop who knew his first name trying to, to, trying to dispel all the badness and, and bring it on down a notch by saying, Cagney, go home. Or you could see what others see, and that is, wow, he got kid gloves. What do you see, Darren? I see an officer that exercised an exceptional level of professionalism in doing the best that he could to defuse a volatile situation. We clearly had an individual that was disturbing the peace and acting in a disorderly manner. And I think that the officer did what was best in separating the two individuals so he can gain the information as to what was necessary to eventually take this person into custody, which did happen later on throughout the course of the incident. Okay, so the incident went further. Um, you, you could hear Cagney Matthews at one point yelling uh, into a camera, basically taunting anyone watching the videotape of the neighbor to, you know, come on by my house and bring whoever you like. And then he actually yelled out his address. And, of course, the Internet uh, did its thing. And, wow, like hundreds and hundreds of people showed up at his house. Look at these crowds. They were throwing things at him. And they were throwing things at the police who came to actually arrest him because it turned out there were plenty of other, um, you know, complaints about harassment. But there you go. Like, that's how things turned out. And, and then this is how it turned out for, for Cagney. He was charged with bias, intimidation and harassment. Well, we're going to watch that story, guys. But when we come back after the break, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that training because that's also a big story this week. There's a big push for national training. The standards evened out, like teaching and schooling and standardized tests for policing. I want to get your thoughts on that as we come back. If it's that music, we're definitely back with the guys from Live PD. <laughs> Captain Rafael Gonzalez, as well as Sheriff Mark Lamb, who now stars on the American Sheriff Network, and then retired lieutenant from the NYPD, Dr. Darren Porcher, is also with us tonight. Okay, you guys, um, a controversial opinion piece on the Hill is calling for something that is, you know, making a lot of people sort of step back and take a second look. It's a very specific kind of reform to policing a national standard in training. Uh, not so different, actually, in theory, from what you see in education, actually. And it recognizes that the 18,000, 18,000 law enforcement agencies all around the country range in size from like Mayberry, you know, little itty bitties to the whole giant NYPD, but that some training is universal. And I wanted to, uh, to, to get your thoughts on that. Captain Gonzalez, what do you think? I mean, overall, I, I see where they're trying to go with this. Uh, the biggest thing is that I feel like we're putting the, the wagon before the horse. Um, let's start paying our police officers uh, better salaries um, nationwide, not just um, bare minimum. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing is the fact that a lot of agencies are having to lower their standards, lower some of the requirements um, where places that wouldn't hire you for maybe uh, a, a drug issue that you had in your record are now being hired. So we can start with that and then maybe take a look at, at, at doing a nationwide standard. Well, I looked at something that kind of um, made me shake my head a little. And, and Sheriff Lamb, maybe you can help me out here. 
In Germany, for instance, they get 30 months of basic training. And apparently here in the U.S., the average is six. Six months versus 30 months. There's a huge difference there. Are we way behind or are they way ahead? I think it's a little bit of both, Ashley. And first of all, I think this is a, a terrible idea. And I'll tell you why. I know it's well intentioned, but you continue to take away what this country was built on, which is state sovereignty, our ability to govern ourselves. We continue to see an overreach of the federal government. And this is just yet another example. How about they get their own house in order before they start coming into ours and telling us how we should do things? I get what they're trying to do here. The federal government does not need to be involved in this. Let us continue to work to better our training in our own states. There isn't a law enforcement official in this country who doesn't want to train our people more than what we are able to train them. You need to fund us more. You need to pay these guys more. Um, there, are, there are so much more you can do. But federalizing it is not the answer. We already have a big enough government as it is. We need to look at ways of minimizing it, returning the power to the states. All right, let me move on to um, a video out of Wisconsin um, because the officer does something I personally think is very responsible. I don't know how you guys are going to weigh in on this, but he's attempting to pull over um, a guy on a motorcycle, right? Guy speeding. I mean, he's flying 100 miles an hour in a residential neighborhood. So the officer actually stops. He just pulls, like, he just stops the chase, hoping that that biker's going to slow down and not hurt anybody. He already got the license plate of the biker. Um, but someone did get hurt. And I want you to take a look. I'm going to warn you, though, right away, uh, what you're about to see is pretty disturbing. Take a look. man are you okay he was not uh he was not okay uh the biker hit a car that was stopped on the road and the biker was killed 33 years old and dead holy man um darren porcher this is the kind of thing that you know no matter what you do it seems that there was no saving him you know uh maybe someone else is alive because the police officers backed off Maybe if they kept chasing him, it would have ended awful earlier. What are your thoughts? Additionally, police departments discourage officers from embarking upon police pursuits for the same reason. And you don't want the person that you're pursuing to get into an accident and injure uh, another citizen, or you don't want the officer to be injured. So that being said, I think the officer did what was right in terms of um, disengaging from the, from the pursuit. He was able to get the license plate, and you can get him another day. It was just unfortunate in this particular incident. The, perpen that, the person that was being pursued crashed into another vehicle and lost their life. And this is really a testament to you should never attempt to evade police because you, there's a greater propensity of danger when you continue to speed on the roads, as we see in this video. Yeah, I mean, that's just so distressing. And, um, you know, who knows what, what would have happened if the chase had continued. Um, could, could have been worse. Could have, we could have been talking about a number of people injured and not just uh, the, the, the motorcyclist. Okay, also, guys, there's always a lot of media coverage when somebody is fatally shot uh, by the police. Um, and many cases, you know, deservingly so, but this is something that's not getting a lot of attention and I wanna bring it up. 2021 is now on pace to see a 40% increase in officers killed in the line of duty. That includes officers that have been shot or stabbed or intentionally hit by vehicles. I don't know that that's something that people even know happens, that police officers are intentionally run down. Uh, wow, Captain Gonzalez, do those numbers surprise you? Uh, 
Yes and no, to be honest with you. Uh, we know that here lately, it seems like uh, law enforcement does have a target on its back and just the, the, the amount of different negativity that we're seeing nationwide on social media sites and, and news media that has their own platforms that they're pushing as far as making uh, law enforcement uh, to be the, the, the evil empire. Unfortunately, those numbers are, are a little drastically high, but um, we train our men and women to the best of our capabilities and the men and women that wear this uniform will wear it. Um, and knowing that they are taking a chance where their, their life might be taken, unfortunately. But yes, those, those numbers are staggering. Uh, and I don't care what anybody thinks of the police, whether they're defunders or whether they're, you know, supporters. It's depressing when you see images like this, because this means a, a, a person who risked his or her life is dead. And there's a family behind that person as well. And it's um, it, these are sad images, no matter how you slice it. Hey, you guys, thank you. I always appreciate you coming on to talk about these topics. Captain Rafael Gonzalez, Lieutenant Darren thank Porcher you. and Sheriff Mark Lamb. Sheriff Mark Lamb, now seen on the American Sheriff Network. I uh, just want to make sure everybody thank knows. You. Um, thank you, guys. See you again in a week, I hope. Thank you. Okay, so it's Friday, and that's a lot of heavy stuff, right? But it's Friday, so we could all use a laugh, and that's exactly what we're going to do because we're going to take a look at all the lighter, weirder stuff in the news coming up after the break. Happy Friday night, friends. Um, it is time to take a big exhale and start the weekend off right. Hello, by taking a look at the lighter side of the news. And we're going to do that tonight with CNN commentator and nationally syndicated columnist and my favorite weekend friend, Essie Cup. And also with me tonight is comedian uh, and stand up extraordinaire feller. Um, his special is called Tall, Dark, and Pleasant, Pete Lee. Um, your special is premiering tonight on Showtime. How, how timely of us to be able to get you on the air with us. Thank you for doing this. What are you drinking, by the way, Pete? Uh, I am actually uh, about to pour a little bit of Macallan. It's my favorite scotch. Uh, I hope I can say oh. brand names, but it's my favorite. I'm going to pour it on the rocks. What are you drinking? Well, I kind of had an inkling that was what you were going to do. So I actually went back to the well that Scotty Pippen sent me. <laughs> and this is his <laughs> digits. It's a bourbon, but it's Scotty Pippen. So I'm not a bourbon drinker, but it's Scotty Pippen. So I had to. And, and Essie, what's, uh, let me guess, it's got to be a jalapeno marg, I think, right? It's not. It's cold and rainy, as you know, because you live down the street. So I'm drinking the hot toddy. Oh. oh my lord, the real housewives of Jerry. <laughs> it is a brand new franchise on News Nation. It will officially be now thus um, titled. I love it. I love it. And I'm, I'll be one of that. you. Um, I, I just want to talk about my hair and teeth and nails for a night instead of all this other stuff. So, real housewives, here we go. All right. Ready, everybody? Let's get started. Started. Um, so what I have always known is that, you know, marijuana kind of slows you down, um, but it sure did not stop Olympic speedster Shakari Richardson from indulging. Unfortunately, though, that got her kicked right off the U.S. Olympic team. The story has the nation divided and it kind of has a short one very potential gold medal. Um, Essie Cup, do you see where the divisions are and are they legitimate divisions? Listen, I think we should have a debate about the rules and whether marijuana should be a banned substance when it's in fact legal many places. But what I loved about Shakira is she completely took ownership for this. She said, look, I broke the rules. I knew the rules and I broke them and I shouldn't have. And so I think we can debate whether it's a, it's a good rule or not to have, but it was a rule. It's a rule in her sport. And uh, she knows she's, she kind of screwed up. I love that she took responsibility. Yeah, Pete, we had uh, Ross Rebagliati on this week, and he won a gold medal uh, a gazillion years ago and had it stripped for marijuana, but then got it back because back then it wasn't a banned substance. And back then we all joked, he should have got two. You know, if you win a gold medal and you're, uh, you know, uh, on the sleeve, like, aren't you even more amazing? Yeah, I mean, I here's my take on it. I think that we should actually, she's, she's so fast. I think we <laughs> we should see how high she can get and still run that fast. Like, I think she, 
<laughs> that's that's my take on it. Like like I want her to be as high as gas prices. That's what I really want. <laughs> high as gas prices on the Fourth of July holiday. But if you think about it, you know historically, I think weed is a performance enhancer, right? Uh, you have Michael Phelps, who smoked weed and has the most Olympic medals in history, I believe. Uh, the Netherlands, where Amsterdam is, they win pretty much all of the Olympic uh, winter gold medals. And then uh, just because I've been there and I had some really good stuff uh, to smoke on, uh, you know, come on, Jamaica is the fastest uh, sprinting team in the world, and they have some of the and best weed in the sled, world. right? And there's a country yeah. that should never have even been uh, qualified for bobsled, but there they were. Okay, so um, by the way, for the record, Ross Rebagliati says it is a performance enhancing drug, but so is a banana and so is water. <laughs> I love that uh, assessment, right? Okay, so this next video, I still can't get it out of my head and everybody has a different reaction to it, but it is really, really hard for a billionaire not to look cool. Elon Musk and Richard Branson and Mark Cuban. These are guys that are flying to the moon and sitting courtside with celebrities and owning teams and they're living the high life. And then there is the following guy, Mark Zuckerberg, on an electric foil. Take a look. Growing like a breeze, country roads, take me home to the place. I particularly love the producer who came up with our banner, Zero Zucks Given. But Essie Cup, it's funny. Like, this was his 4th of July ode, and I thought it was brilliant and awesome. I thought he upped his game, but then all these other people were so hating on him. Well, I'm not hating on him, but but speaking of pot, I thought, is this drugs? Am I, am I on <laughs> drugs right now? Because I couldn't tell if it was real. It looked like CGI. I'm on TikTok a lot, um, like all day, not producing or posting, but just watching. And uh, so I'm very aware of what deep fakes look like. And I thought it was a deep fake. And so I, I had to question my, uh, my sobriety in the moment. <laughs> I'm with you. I, first of all, when I looked at it, Pete, I just thought it was some amazing guy and didn't even realize, wait a minute, th that's Mark Zuckerberg. I, I watched it a, f a full way through before I even realized it was Zuckerberg. It turns out he's a big surfer, so this would naturally follow. However, Pete, that electric foil comes in at about, I don't know, $12,500 or so. Does that surprise you? Uh, no, I mean, I'm also a surfer. Uh, I'm a big surfer. But here's my thing about that is that Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg is one of the richest people on the planet. He can afford this foil that costs a lot of money, but he can't afford a 4K camera to shoot that video in. Like that was the blurriest <laughs> video that I've ever seen. It was like shot on a BlackBerry Pearl or a flip phone or something. Like, like Facebook, are you like, are you not selling enough ads? What's what's happening? I don't even I don't well, even get it. But and by the way. You know, everybody in the world is like Facebook is spying on us. And meanwhile, this is what the head of Facebook is doing. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'll tell you what, um, the Blackberry Pearl, it took me a long time to pry that out of my cold, dead hands, but it, it did happen about 10 years ago. So you're right about that. <laughs> stay, stay put, you guys. When we come back, I want to talk about that guy who got the bobcat off his wife. And that is not hyperbole. Um, and a couple of other very funny things that happened this week, including a Yankee Doodle Karen. That's next. <laughs> Good song to go into the weekend, and I hope you guys all had a good week as we head into uh, Friday night and Saturday day. Um, I'll tell you one guy who had a really good week, if not a very bizarre week, the guy uh, who grabbed a bobcat. A bobcat. Uh, the video just emerged. He literally grabs a bobcat off of his wife and then chucks it. Wait for it. Hold on. It's kind of weird. You see him like looking around. It's going to happen. Um, Wow, they had their pet cat in a cage. It must have drawn attention um, to a bigger, meaner cousin. Take a look. Oh, 
Holy Frioli. I mean, that was unbelievable. He, I love the part where he's holding it, holding up the bobcat. It's a bobcat. And then he just throws it, but then it comes right back to, you know, to the rescue zone. You know, it's amazing these ring, right? I don't know if you have one of these cameras. I do. And I am just waiting for the day that I get something that exciting on my ring camera. To Essie, what do you think? Yeah. I know. I, Ash, I mean, this might not surprise you because you know me, but I have dreams about being this hero, right, with wildlife. Because I, I go out in wildlife a lot and you know, we fish, we hunt, and I have dreams of, of, of being this person one day. And you, you kind of hope you never, you never are in that situation, but I'm kind of like waiting for this to be like my best moment. And I, th I think it will be one day. <laughs> well, you know something? Um, I'll tell you what, I, I want to just be the person that watches it live instead of on a camera. I don't want to have a bobcat in my grip. So I don't know about you, Pete. I'm terrified of these things. Yeah, I mean, I give this guy credit. Sign him up. Sign him up for the WWE SmackDown. I mean, he he <laughs> literally like. Did you see him? He he sets his coffee down and he's like, ah, we really need to wash the car. And then instantly he's like, just like ready for SmackDown. He's like, oh, it's a Bobcat. Snap, snap into a Slim Jim. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I it don't want the Bobcat. Like a minute, like it's seen from the lion king for a minute there it's a bobcat <laughs> <laughs> you're so Listen right to all it, the yelling in it, the background it's, <laughs> it's a bobcat. I, I love bobcat. how people get the covid vaccine and they just automatically think that they're covered for rabies too <laughs> 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 yeah, those are not rabies shots. They're not multi-dose. Okay. All right, I'll leave the bobcat alone for a minute. Um, okay, who doesn't love the, the, the phone? There is serious thunder going on, so I'm just going to apologize. It. Like, it sounds like sounds like people are moving upstairs, but it's th bad thunder. So I think the whole Northeast has been affected by it. Okay, fireworks on the 4th of July is awesome. Everybody, well, almost everybody loves them. Certainly not this woman. Take a look. She did. She lived there. Uh, the thing on the bottom, actually, that happened in Ocean, uh, Ocean City, Maryland. What This is a different story altogether, so I just don't want to conflate the two stories. But it was 4th of July. It happens every year. But clearly, S.E., it did not go over well with that woman. That's me when people are making mouth noises. That is me. I understand her pain, and I understand her state of mind, not over fireworks. But that is how enraged I am when someone's like chewing near me. But yeah, you'd think you'd think every year that you know the calendar kind of foretells what's about to happen. Maybe you uh I don't know, maybe you, you go hang out in your basement that night. <laughs> I agree. And you know what? My puppy dog does not like thunder. He's very upset right now. He also does not like fireworks, but I'm prepared for it. I get the little sedative stuff beforehand. But Pete, this just makes for, I mean, it's just TikTok gold. It's TikTok gold. And I, I have to say, um, I'm on her side uh, and not very many people <laughs> in the comments were on her side. But just here's my thing. Uh, menopause is a real thing. And imagine that you're literally <laughs> seeing hot flashes. All right, uh -huh. like it would be terrifying to you. So let's just give her a little bit of a break. And also she was yelling so loud that I felt like the fireworks were like, shh, like, could you keep it down? <laughs> like that's how bad it was for her. I just have to see one more second of it. Like, let's pop that up for one more second, just so I can take it all in. Take a look. <laughs> This has happened to me with my children. I have 100%. <laughs> I have 100% that has happened. And that guy's face, that's my kid laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It has not happened with you, Essie, because your baby is six. He can't yeah, annoy you. Bigger than three and a half feet. I haven't had to tell him with that yet. 
<laughs> just wait for it. Yeah. It's coming. Okay, this, uh, I got to move on. Otherwise, I'm not going to make it through the show because I really do find that just so incredibly funny. Um, ah, it's the age-old joke. Why did the alligator cross the road? You know the one that's supposed to be the chicken. In this one, it was an alligator. And either way, uh, some lady in Louisiana decided to do something I say crazy and sane. She got out of the car and she's trying to make the alligator cross the road faster. And I don't know, those look like sneakers, not steel toes. And even if it were a steel toe, Pete, would you do anything like this? And I don't know about your baseball bat, fella. That's an alligator. No, no way, Ashley. I would never do that. Like, she looks like, have you ever tried to kick flush a toilet because it was kind of gross? You know, that's what she looks like she's doing. <laughs> But she's dressed like she should be going to do like a 5K charity walk. And she's just lifting her leg up. At, at, at one point, I was like, is she trying to do the crane kick from Karate Kid? I think. I think she studied at Miyagi, though. I don't know. <laughs> very, very sweet reference with them. Yes, that's a crane kick. But first of all, I do have to say this. While it, most people would weigh in and say, that's so dumb, I also think that she's super tough, Essie. Like, I don't know I've ever seen many guys, let alone women, who would be this tough in their running shorts and pink, you know, kids. Yeah, this would be me. Um, tough, maybe, <laughs> but definitely dumb. This would be me. I would get out of the car thinking this is my moment. This is my wildlife hero moment. And I would, I, at first I thought she was trying to pee on the on the alligator. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, but whatever's going through her mind, I love it. I love the focus and the courage. Get out there. I think the sheer courage. Listen, I wouldn't get within 20 feet of these things because I, I once heard they can run 40 miles an hour. And look at the guy who walks up to her, by the way. It looks like he's got one sock or one leg that might not be real. And I'm wondering if he's telling her, hey, don't do that. I've been there before. I think you'll see it in a second. Look at him. It's like, whoa, wait. One of those feet looks very different than the other. <laughs> Just made a whole movie in Maybe. your mind. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's like, oh, lady, I did this. It didn't turn out well. Okay, I got to take a break real quickly. But when we come back after the break, quit me, baby, one more time. I kid you not. Britney Spears has said she is done with performing. But if you see her Instagram, I don't get it. We're back in a minute. If that sounds like a Britney Spears song, that's actually intentional. I'm back now with Essie Cup and Pete Lee. So toxic seems to be, you know, it's a great song, a really good song. It's also a really good word for all of the next uh, business I'm about to report. According to Britney Spears longtime manager, Larry Rudolph, and I'll quote him, Britney had been voicing her intention to officially retire. What I find really weird about this, guys, is that Larry Rudolph admits he hasn't spoken to Britney in about two and a half years. <laughs> so, SE Cup, I don't know if you call that the epitome of hearsay, whether it's really, really true. But if you look at her Instagram, she's constantly dancing. I can't imagine her retiring. Oh, I can. I hope she does. This woman has been performing, uh, you know, under such duress and stress for decades. I don't think she's ever had a life that was her own. And I, I hope that she kind of goes away to live her life if she's granted freedom from this conservatorship. Um, you know, it's just gone on too long. And all she wants to do is have some babies and like settle down and live a normal life, which of course won't ever be possible. But I think, yeah, she should stop. She should stop performing for people who have milked her as a cash cow for decades. So I'll only weigh in on the legal side of this, and that is that there's so much redacted file on her, you know, two decade long case, almost two decade long case. And much of the redactions are the they're the HIPAA stuff, the medical stuff, what the analysts actually see in her mental health and what they report back to the judge. So I'm actually very agnostic when it comes to this. I'm very worried about her, um, especially again, Pete, if you look at her Instagram, it is very, very strange. It doesn't look like it's someone who's an adult uh, on her Instagram. Yeah. So I, maybe what Essie's saying is right. Good to retire. You need you need your own health. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm on hashtag Team Brittany because I think that she needs help. I just think maybe she needs different help. Uh, I I really mm. feel for her because yeah, she's on Instagram 
uh, she's spinning around like like an Uber on the app map, and she you know she looks a little unhappy. And here's the here's the other thing that you need to consider is that she has basically been locked away in her house since 2008. So Brittany has been in COVID quarantine since before the COVID quarantine. So we we got to help her out and. I don't know if you, you know, heard her emotional plea to the judge, but, uh, you know, I thought I was a fan of her before. I really have a crush on her now. Uh, you know, she openly was brave enough to discuss her, her mental health issues. And then she also talked about having an IUD. And I was like, that's my type. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stop it. Well, I do worry about, again, uh, some of the things she said, because there are people around her we, we don't know much about and we don't know what influence they've had on her. And I think there's so much we don't know. I'm of the camp that there's a ton we don't know. And I will not um, judge or weigh in on the Free Britney movement because I just think that uh, I know the surface and, and that's about it. OK, wait, I've got to get you guys to St. Louis for a second, because a man there had his stolen property returned to him. And that's always good, especially when it's your leg, your prosthetic leg. Are you kidding me? Apparently, some someone stole this guy's leg after he was struck from behind. Can you imagine robbing a guy? For, for, so here it is. He's 56 years old. He's walking. He's struck from behind, knocked to the ground. The attacker steals his cell phone cash and his leg. Essie, what, are, what is the world coming to when you've got to steal someone's cell phone and their leg? God, no, it's, it's, it's horrific and just so sad. I mean, literally stealing from, you know, a crippled person, right? Someone who's so vulnerable to begin with. Uh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't imagine it. But I hear he did get it returned, right? He did. And I think that's the, the, the good news part of all of this. Yeah. And I just have to keep apologizing that I sound like I'm in the Munsters house, uh, you know, because it's just like there's thunder and lightning all over the place in the studio. But um, there is there is that weather system that's passing over a lot of America. Guys, I have to say a, a, a huge thank you. Both of you, I appreciate, you know, you always weighing in on this. Essie, uh, let's make plans for the weekend. And also you can catch Essie on CNN. And then Pete Lee, can't wait to catch your special talk. Uh, tall, dark, and uh, pleasant. Did I get it right? Tall, dark, and pleasant? Tall, dark, and pleasant. I'm very pleasant. <laughs> well, you are very pleasant. It's premiering tonight. To both of you, thank you, and have a wonderful weekend.